Hey everyone, today we are going to do something different. We would use classes in order to make a pie game program, rather a game. So I would try to build a collision game. I would have this man and if he hits the bricks falling from above, the game is over. Simple, okay? So in pie game, we have a sprite module for working with classes. Sprites are objects. If you don't have much idea about classes and objects in Pygame, basically, they are a convenient way of grouping data and code into a single entity. Sprite module is a very good way of working with classes in Pygame. So for the algorithm, what I would do is, I would first have a man class that would be of the sprite type, and uh, I would also have a brick class. Now both of them must have the init function where I load these images and get their rectangular surfaces then we would have the move function in both the classes we would move the man by giving key inputs from arrow keys and the movement of bricks would be programmed and the initial position of the bricks would be randomly picked by the random module now using the sprite module i would check in the game loop if there is a collision between these two image objects if there is i would display the text game over okay now let's start writing the code for it so let me write the basic code quickly i'll import pygame then i'll initialize it i'll write pygame dot init then i'll set up my screen write screen equals pygame dot display dot set mode and the screen size is 500 comma 500 then I'll set the caption. I'll write pygame dot display dot set caption and the caption let it be collision game. Okay. Now for the while loop, I'll write while true for events in pygame dot event dot get pygame dot event dot get if events dot type equals pygame.quit I'll call the quit function by pygame I'll fill my screen with some color I'll write screen.fill white and I'll update this let me use the flip uh, function I'll write pygame.display.flip and I'll yeah that's the basic code now let's write the main code. Let's get to the main functions of our game. Now since I said I'd be working with random module because I need the bricks to be falling from randomly falling from anywhere. So I'll import random module too. I'll write import random. Okay. Then I'll have my clock object. I'll write clock equals pi game dot time dot clock. That's my clock object to set up the frame rate later. Okay. And I would need to set up the speed variable for the movement of bricks. This is just the initialization. We'll use this later. You will get an idea why we have initialized it here. And I also need to display that uh, text game over. So I set up the font. I'll write font equals font this font and uh, let it be georgia and 60 as the font size cool so i have these variables initialized so let's get to the two classes i talked about the brick and the man class so let me define the brick class first i'll write class brick so that's how you define the class in Py python and since i want to inherit the sprite class I'll write pygame.sprite, which is the module, dot sprite, which is the class. Okay. Sprite is the class in this sprite module. Okay. So it might be confusing in the beginning, but just try to think and understand. You'll get a hold of it. Okay. Now, I'll have this init function. I'll define init. I'll write def underscore underscore init underscore underscore and self okay so i'll inherit the sprite class so i'll write super dot init super dot init 
it's a way in python how we inherit the classes base classes okay so now i'll load my image i'll write self dot image equals pygame dot image dot load you should have a little basic idea of classes in python otherwise it might be too much for you to handle for now because we are already working with pygame that is new for you and then we are again having a new thing that is classes so you might not get comfortable with it uh, so please try to understand the classes first and then get to the py pygame code fine so i'll write self dot image equals pygame dot image dot load so my image is in collision folder it's just how we displayed an image in pygame earlier just the difference is that right now we are doing this in a function inside a class okay then i'll transform i'll scale this image of mine i'll write self dot image equals pygame dot transform dot scale self image what i need to transform what i need to scale is the self image and i need to scale it to size 40 comma 40 okay then i need to get the rectangle so i'll write self dot rect these are just variables but of brick class so that's how you write it i'll write self dot rect equals self dot image dot get rect i got the rectangular surface and i need to define the center so my center would be randomly picked for these bricks falling from above so i've used random dot rand int 40 comma 500 minus 40 i've kept margin of 40 either side just so the boundaries and uh, the bricks don't collide they don't overlap okay and yeah then i'll define the move function for the movement of the bricks how they, they have a motion right they are falling from above so how i'll do it i'll write self dot reg dot move in place and the arguments are zero comma speed so my speed was five and uh, i'm just giving a speed in the y direction because i want it to fall from above and uh, there should not be any movement along the x-axis the brick is just falling from above directly towards the ground and uh, move in place what is move in place does is from an object's coordinates it moves it with respect to that position uh, what the speed we have mentioned okay so like if the coordinates right now are 400 comma 400 and i've mentioned zero comma speed as the move in place arguments after this function is called the final coordinates would be 400 comma 405 okay i hope you get what i'm trying to say and i'll put in some conditions that once the brick has traveled the entire screen and not hit uh, th the man okay then what should what should happen i'll write if self dot rec dot top is greater than 500 now i just quickly wanted to show you what this rect top and dot center means which coordinate of the entire rectangle i'm talking about you can see it in this picture so i hope you get the idea what is dot top which coordinate i am talking about and what is dot center there are two different coordinates of the rectangle okay now if it is so if the rectangle stop coordinate is greater than 500 that is it is out of the screen now now i should reallocate this top coordinate to zero and the center should be randomly picked again okay again i have kept a margin of 30 and 100 over here so that things don't overlap okay cool now i'll have my man class again i'll write class man very similar to the above class and pygame dot sprite dot sprite okay then i'll have my init function again i'll write self in the argument with the super keyword i'll inherit the sprite base class i'll again load the images but i'll load that image of scared man now it is in the collision folder so accordingly i've mentioned the path then i'll scale this i'll write pygame dot transform dot scale self image 100 comma 150 okay 
and uh, I'll write self dot rect equals self dot image dot get rect to get the rectangular surface and define its center. It's just the initial coordinates of the image that I've loaded of the scared man. Let it be 200 comma 420. Okay. And then I'll define the move function, how my, how the man moves. Okay. So since I'll be taking inputs from keys, the arrow keys from the keyboard, I'll again write keys equals to pygame dot key dot get pressed. So I hope you remember this was a sequence. This was a Boolean sequence that contained the state of all the keys on the keyboard. If it is true, then that key is being pressed. Now I'll check if keys pygame dot k underscore left. Then I'll write self dot rec dot move in place minus five comma zero. So I want to move it towards the left. Okay, so I'm subtracting. We discussed this earlier in earlier programs. And if we want to move left, we'll decrease it, uh, decrease its coordinates. Okay, so I'll decrease it by five. And if keys by game dot k underscore right, self dot rec dot move ip five comma zero. Okay, so if it is uh, if I if I've pressed the right key, if the user has pressed the right key. The man will move towards right with five by five units. Okay. Now I'll declare objects of this man and brick class. M1, I'll write M1 equals man and B1 is equals to brick. So this is how we declare objects in Python of a class. So these are my two objects. Okay, and now I'll have a variable bricks. I'll write equals pi game dot sprite dot group. So I'll declare this bricks to be a group. Okay, so what a group is, it's a sprite module uh, functionality. It's a container class to hold and manage multiple sprite objects. Okay, now to this group, I'll add B1. Okay, so this is a bricks group. Okay, and to that, I've added B1, that object, that brick object. Okay. Now I'll have another class in which I'll put everything, all the objects that I've declared. Okay. Now all sprites equals pygame.sprite.group. Again, this is another container class. Okay. And I'll add hem1 and b1 to this group. You'll get it in a minute why I have declared these groups. Okay. Bricks and all sprites. Now let's get to the while true loop. Now for entity, in all sprites, screen dot blit, entity dot image, comma entity dot rect, entity dot move. Okay, what I have done is I'll traverse all that is there in the all sprites group. That is why I've declared all sprites variable because I need to put each of those objects on the screen. So that is how I've done it. I'll write screen dot blit, entity dot image entity.rect so i've got that image on that rectangular position on the screen okay now entity.move i've called on to that move function in the respective classes uh, and according to the move function my objects would move my images would move and i'll also now is the main part i'll check if that sprite objects collide with any of the other object okay so I'll write if pi game dot sprite because it is a sprite module uh, function dot sprite collide any. It's a simple test if a sprite intersects anything in a group. Okay. So m1 comma bricks. Okay. M1 is the man. We have only one man, but we'll have a number of bricks. Okay. And then if it is so, if this returns true, then I'll render the font that I declared above, I'll write text equals font dot render. What is my message? It is game over. I want anti alias to be true and the color, let it be orange. Fine. Then I'll get this on the rectangle. So text rect equals text dot get rect center. That will be 500 double slash 2. 500 double slash 2. Okay. So I got this text at the center of the screen and I'll use split again to get this text on the rectangle. 
I'll use dot flip function so that I can update this and uh, just so I can visualize this text I can see this text that the game is over I'll use this time module I'll write time dot sleep for two seconds so that I can see that the game is over and then I'll quit okay otherwise you'll just see the game over text is blinking and going away and the screen goes away okay that wouldn't look good so I will also need to import time module I'll write import time yeah that's it so I'll also need to set up the frame rates I'll write clock dot tick and 40 let the uh, frame rate be 40 okay now let's play this game and let's see if everything works properly as we have defined now when i run this i can actually see the bricks falling from above i can move the man using the left and right arrow keys I guess the speed is a little slow so let me change the frame rate to 60 so that it, the game becomes a little fun to play and a little complex so the bricks are now falling faster and uh, when the man and the brick collides the game is over I have this text and the screen goes away automatically after two seconds cool so this was it for this program and you can also think about how you'd gradually increase the speed so you can think of levels for that you might need to declare some user events uh, please think about it please look for what you can do and this was it for the program thank you